Hi there, I'm Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com, and today on Behind the Charts, we're going to hear from Tony Hansen. We sat down with Tony uh, at the Las Vegas Traders Expo end of last year, had a great conversation about how she approaches the market. I think of Tony as an educator. She has done more than many uh, and then most really to, uh, to educate on trading and empowering individual investors to make better decisions with their investments. Um, but she is very visual and she reminded me of the benefits, the value of technical analysis and charts as a way to visualize market activity, visualize market psychology, visualize the data. You'll see how she, using her own arms and, and limbs, will show you exactly how charts have evolved and when you need to pay attention to them. I thought she also did really well at talking about how you deal with losing trades. Her answer about you know the danger of doubling down when something is not working and how to get past that mentally, that was really helpful. She thinks of market prices and, and charts as building blocks and thinking of how the price patterns evolve over time as a little building blocks and how they go on. So can't wait for you to hear this conversation I had with Tony Hansen from TonyHansen.com. Hey everyone, we're here from the Las Vegas Traders Expo, sitting down with Tony Hansen, Hansen Financial Group, TonyHansen.com. Tony, thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. So this is your first money show event. Congrats. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm being a little bit sarcastic. I know you've been to a great many of these. Uh, and thanks. I mean, I, 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 I think of you as someone who shared so much with of your expertise with so many people. I know TonyHanson.com is very focused on education, on empowering people to make decisions. Can you just tell us a little bit about the work you're doing on your on your website now? Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I came about in like the mid-1990s. That's when I first started trading. Okay. And um, I acquired a website, SwingTrader.net. And what I did was I started putting out my trade ideas, mm -hmm. what I was trading, what I was doing, why I was doing it. Yeah. Because back then, there was a lot of education yeah. for, especially technical analysis. It was like voodoo, right? Yes, that's right. Oh, and yep. everybody was like floor traders had like their own, you know, biases and everything. Yeah. And so it was really hard to know where to start, where to go. So. I came from a background in arts and archaeology, so I'm like science and <laughs> visual. Yes. And so I see patterns very, very clearly. Got it. And once I see a pattern, I remember a pattern very mm. easily. So I realized, you know, very quickly that things like, oh, a bull flag, in when certain nuances happen, it's going to fail. Yes. And so over the years, I developed a system of technical analysis that um, I call it building blocks of price development. Okay. So it's like not thinking in terms of, oh, hey, this is a head and shoulders. Yeah. It's looking at what are the components that are going into it? Mm. Um, what's the difference between the spacing between like your shoulder and your head and your shoulder? Yeah. That makes a difference. Sure. The time development makes a difference. Um, the trend placement makes a difference. Yep. The volume makes a difference. And it's all of these things coming together right. to create that bigger picture. Very interesting. So um, a people caught kind of the, I caught the attention of a, a lot of people back then okay. and they invited me to do newsletters eventually led to a trading room so then I'm trading live and then life happens and that's like way too much to keep yes. up with yes. so I took a back step to just doing like um individual mentoring one-on-one -on -one and creating courses and things hmm. and um just teaching, you know, like yeah. a, so teaching for like the CME group and for like the International Securities Exchange and working for real money and, and things like that, you know, so yeah. it kind of took me off of like being so there 24 seven. Yes, and it's a lot. <laughs> it, it, it was a lot. So over the years, people have been begging me to come back and do more yeah. of the live teaching again. Right. So I started League of Traders about a year and a half ago. Okay. Great. And what that is, is like every Monday at noon, I teach a class. So it might be a strategy class, might be emotions, it might be executions. Okay. And then throughout the week at noon, we do, we follow it live. So they might see my trades that are taking place at that point, yeah. but we try to focus on that particular strategy. Right. And so they can understand, hey, this is a day we don't trade this strategy, but look, you still see it here. Why wouldn't I take this one? Mm. And what's gonna happen? Yeah. And I will walk them through point by point what will happen in this scenario. And they're like, wow, how did you know that? <laughs> I'm like, it's because they repeat. You yeah. know, yeah, yeah, once yeah. you learn it, yes. you know it, but it is a process. That's you right. know, I mean, when you come into trading, it's like 
you're a resident getting thrown into the ER on your first day, yeah. you know? Yep. <laughs> like, yep. Wow. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. Can you talk a little bit about your use of technical analysis? How did you, how were you first introduced to the toolkit? How did you learn it and sort of build out your own technical approach to, to analysis, to trading? Well, um, to start with, I mean, I was introduced to candlestick charting okay. early on. So yep. that's kind of what I used. Yep. And then um, uh, I can't even tell you where I like learned like some of the very basics, like all flags. It was right. so long ago. Yep. But they really didn't <laughs> go past that. It was, yeah. they, um, a lot of people were using like moving averages back then. So okay. they were saying like buy a five day pullback into a 20 period moving average. Okay. So I'd do that and sometimes it would work and sometimes it would fail. Yeah. So what I started doing was printing out every single trade that I took. Nice. I would mark my entries, I would mark my exits, wow. and then I'd try to find out what do the winners have in common that's different from the losers. Right, right. And that's where the building blocks came into play. Like those Very things I discovered I, I learned trend development. The way I look at trend development is a little bit different than Elliott Wave because I didn't study Elliott Wave. Right. So I count more in waves of two okay. versus like their five point waves. Yep. Yep. Because a lot of times if you're looking at the market, you're going to get, you know, two waves up, a two wave correction, two more waves up. Yeah. And even if it tries to go for that next one, it might be stunted and sure. turn around. Sure. So you're more likely to see twos and twos and twos uh, okay. than you will see that traditional five step play out. Yes, yes. So even when people think of five step, I'm like, okay, well, think of it this way. Think of that first step and correction as actually being part of the correction here. So you're going up into, so you got one up, two up, and then it goes for three. But what if you take those two corrections and put them together? Then you're only looking at the first one up, the last right. one up, and this is the tilted correction in the middle. Mm -hmm. So when you see three wave count, oftentimes those corrections will be half the size that you would see in the same period of time that would be a two wave count. Right, right. So it's just a, a different way of looking at things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have to ask, you seem pretty warmed up here. Um, <laughs> what I'd call the worst trade question. Is, is there an example, you know, we deal a lot with people just getting started and, and they face loss for the first time, a, a, a market that completely goes against their position. So can you think of a good example through your own experience where a trade just went completely wrong or you just had the wrong call? And what did you learn from that? How did you get through that mentally and, 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 and so on? Which one? <laughs> Okay, you're the most honest person we've interviewed today. That's it's good. Been 23 years. Yeah. <laughs> There's been a, a lot. A couple. Okay, good. Your favorite. Okay. What's so, out? Um, the main one that it took me a long time to get past doing okay. was that I would have a bias on a trade that I was looking for a correction, but I knew I wouldn't feel like awesome about it. So I'd go in with it like maybe a third of what I would normally do a size. Okay. And it'd go against me. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'm just going to add back in because I still think it's going to work. And it goes against me. And then I'll add back in again. And then the momentum is picking up. Perfect. And I'm yep. like, oh. <laughs> oh. Bleep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, I, I didn't have stops on the book. <laughs> right. Okay. So, that was one that it took a long time. And yeah. then it was like, oh my gosh, I'm giving back all of my games that took me two weeks in a single day on yeah. a single trade. Yeah, yeah. And I think that happens to pretty much every trader that right. they've had that happen to them. That's true. And, you know, I think the biggest thing that I can tell people is put a stop on the books. Yes, mm. it, I, I still do a lot of manual stops, right? Okay, sure. But what I do now is I will have, like, let's say my stop is if it breaks above 100. We'll just use 100. Okay. Then I want out of that trade. Yep. But I'll have the stop at, like, 101. So as it's coming up into 100, yeah. if there's like some wiggling going on, mm -hmm. I can watch it a little bit more manually. Got but it. if it just blows through it, then I'm not stuck like, I, 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 I was going to get yeah. out there. Right. But <laughs> yeah. So when you're, when you're actually setting stops, you mentioned it's a manual process. Is it a technically oriented oh, yes. level? And, and what Absolutely. in general, how would you describe your process of setting stops? What is it based off of generally speaking? 
Um, it's usually looking at support and resistance levels and okay, things sure. like measured moves and <clears throat> momentum changes. Okay. So like, let's say here we're coming down in the market, yep. but it was like strong here to start with. Yeah. And it's starting to turn over. Yeah. So this bottom part, let's say my arms, my trunch channel here, right. this bottom part will keep going. So I'm going to be looking at pivot trades. Yep. So my stop's going to be under that lower channel. Right. So if I think it's something that might wiggle a little bit, yeah. I'm going to keep the stop low enough under that channel okay. that if it just does like a little blurb or a flush, it's not going to take out that stop. Right. So it's going right, to keep right. it a little bit wider. Got it. Um, but I'm waiting for that momentum to start to shift yeah. compared to over here okay. before I start to build into that position. Got it. That's expertly done with your arm. You well, even did it you. in reverse, so it came out very well. I, I know. It's impressive. Yep. Here's, the, here's our down trend, <laughs> and I'm changing momentum, and we're going back up over here. Yes, you're right. There we go. <laughs> so here, you know, speaking of the, the overall market environment, we're in you know, mid-November. Stocks in the U.S. have just been on a tear and just continue to go higher. Um, you know, semiconductors outperforming consistently. There's been a lot of just emergence of, you know, stocks breaking to new highs. How are you thinking of the equity markets here leading into the end of the year? Any general takeaways? A lot like the end of the 1990s, huh? Mm, yeah, right. <laughs> Feels, it rhymes a bit, don't you think? Yes. Okay. So, um, what I do at the beginning of the year, the first class or session I do at the beginning of the year is yeah. I'm like, what is our bigger time frame picture on things? Okay. And so like the way I timed the highs back in 2000 was that we had a lot of um, the tech IPOs, the um, internet bubble yep. stocks, yep. you know? And so I saw a lot of those things doing the same pattern that the overall market was doing, but the overall market was doing it on a larger time frame. Right. So it was all of those rapid run-ups and then the crash. Yep. So when Bitcoin pivoted, mm. I'm like, this is the NASDAQ 2000, mm. yep. go look, it's the same thing. Yeah. Sure enough, that's exactly what happened. And yep. so when we're looking at like the much larger picture, like yearly time frame, I go and I take and I make inflation adjustment adjusted charts okay. all the way back to the inception of the indices. Right. And I'm like, okay, now what do you guys see here? Mm, and yep. it's like, wow, we've got like our three waves up. We've yeah. got some measured moves going on. Right. We're pretty extended. Sure. So you have to keep in mind though, that is a huge frame of time. So, yes, this period of correction started within the last two years. Right. That's where we're starting to see more of that volatility. We're right. in a correction period. Yep. We're not still, you might technically still call it an uptrend because we're hitting higher highs. Yeah. But the way the momentum has shifted, we're in a corrective mm. mode right now. Interesting. Okay. So that's what I'm looking at too. Like on yeah. the um, weekly charts of the NASDAQ, we yep. actually have a series where here we go right here. Yeah. <laughs> we got our two highs okay. and then it had a little more of a correction. Yep. And now we're coming back up mm -hmm. and doing a shelf and coming back up. And that is actually a reversal yeah. pattern there. Right, right, right. So we're actually mm. coming into a reversal pattern on the weekly timeframes on the NASDAQ Very here too. Very interesting. Now, how does that line up? I know you, you look at uh, commodity complex, gold and things like that. Right. Gold, you know, the GLD or the gold <clears throat> future is kind of rolling over. What do you what do you see that? How does that relate to what you're seeing with equities maybe being in that consolidation sort of phase? Right. Well, gold is interesting because I've been very bullish on gold over okay. recently, yeah. and um, we are at a good level of resistance on gold. So, like yeah. currently, we're seeing a little bit of corrections, but the momentum on the upside on gold is we had you know the really sharp peak on gold, and then we had um, a pretty big correction, yep. and it's been starting to kind of roll back over. Sure. So we're in like the bull formation here, and we're just kind right. of coming up off of that. Interesting. There's still a lot of room for sure, that to sure. go up on yeah, gold. Yeah, yeah. So even though we're in a correction short period, yeah. I'm still looking overall for more upside on sure. gold. So for something like that with gold, I mean, that, that's a great take. And I, if you look at the long-term chart, that makes perfect sense. On, on something like that, if it feels overall very constructive, what what would you see or what sort of pattern would tell you that maybe that's incorrect, right? At what point would it turn, like what would you be looking for? Is it a certain, right. is it a breakdown of support? Is it a trigger or a signal from some particular indicator? Like what, what would you use as a way to 
to tell you, okay, nope, it's not going up. This right, going okay, down. so good. So um, I'm usually looking at um, the wave count with the time, with the trend development. Okay, That's sure. a big thing. Yep. And then also, I don't use a lot of indicators. Okay. So as far as indicators go, I'll throw in some Fibonacci every once in a while. Okay. But that's it. I'm watching momentum Got and it. changes in momentum. Okay. So like what we would typically see something, if something can go up fast yeah. and have like that pivotal top to it, a lot of times the way that forms is if it's a news driven top, you'll have your V top right. and you can get the spike back up yeah. and then it will come back down and it'll kind of platform and then slowly go up. That's what we saw right. with um, Bitcoin, you know, yeah. and it's repeating it on a smaller scale now too. It's the same right. thing like Roku is doing the same thing. Yeah. You know, oh my gosh, a lot of these things are doing sure. Tesla, everything. Yep. And yep. so what I'm looking for is as it comes into that high right. and you're coming back up on this other side here, yeah. how does it react when it comes into certain like the Fibonacci retracement levels from that drop? Right. If the momentum changes, if it hits it hard and it hits it fast on the yep. upside, there's some different patterns, different ways that that can play out. Mm -hmm. It can have like uh, a double top and go down. Uh, it could have like a series of three highs right. and go down. It could right. have like three highs, little correction, two wave up and then crash. Yeah. These are all, all that I just described are yeah. like major ways that those markets can correct sure. and still push to slightly higher highs. Got it. But the theme is that there's the shifting in the momentum in the trend. Sure. So okay. each right. of those waves, you watch how it relates to the previous one. And when it. those start to shift and the overall channel shifts, that's what tells us, hey, this is really turning over versus giving us a continuation. Yeah, that's great. That's a great description. Thank you. What you mentioned Bitcoin a couple times. I think a lot of individual investors especially are still kind of trying to get their head around what this asset class is. Right, what does own, Bitcoin How do you think of it? Me. So how do you try to help people understand, I mean, for individual investors, how should they be thinking about cryptocurrencies? Is it an opportunity to diversify? I mean, um, how, would you, how would you consider it? I will tell you that I've stayed away from cryptocurrencies. Okay. So I kind of view it like um, Forex 15 years ago. Okay. Or Forex. Yeah. So for those of you that aren't familiar, um, Forex, you know, 15, 20 years ago, it wasn't as regulated. Right. There wasn't a lot of like consistency and regulations and everybody's yeah. kind of like on their own things. Yeah. And I see a lot of the same type of thing with Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. Got it. Yep. And I think what's happening now with like the CME group stuff coming out with like their micro e-minis and stuff, yeah. they're trying to fill that void with the regulation. Right. So a lot of the cryptocurrency traders, they're the small accounts. They're not yeah. looking to get rich quick, despite what, you know, all of the, the yeah, ads. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Facebook won't even allow um, advertisers for cryptocurrency because the fraud level is so great in them. <laughs> right. yep. So uh, trading cryptocurrency, you have all of the same technical yes. patterns and everything, but it's like trading news. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a lot more extreme. Yeah, yeah. So like what I recommend is that get into a more regulated market like mm. the index features and start with the micros. You mm, can make okay. just trading like a couple of contracts on the micros, you can make $200 a day right. just with core strategies. Yeah, yeah within a couple hours and it's not like yeah. you're having like major risk. In fact, the class I did for the CME this yeah, morning yeah. was an example of a trade that I made over $400 on the trade, right. three contracts in the micros, right. $30 risk. Yeah, yeah. It's and bad. it's something you can do every yeah. day. There's yeah. going to be yeah. setups like that. Hmm. Interesting so yeah, so I stay away from cryptos. So this, this is the first time you and I have spoken. You strike me as someone yeah. who's incredibly calm for spending a career trading and working with traders. <laughs> you seem very laid back. How do you manage that? How do you stay centered, you know, with a, with a, in an industry that's kind of stressful and, um, and hectic at times? So Any tricks I've, for everyone? I've basically always thrown myself into crazy situations. So like <laughs> I, I had foster kids for okay. like 10 years and yes. they were all with different spectrum of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to stay calm yeah. <laughs> when you've got these children that are flying off the walls. Yes, you have to have you, your feet on the ground, I think, at some point, right? You have to be calm, yeah. yeah. So, uh, 
I, my mom was a teacher. My dad mm. was like the head of the engineering computer lab sciences right. division at the university. Uh -huh. So it's like, I don't know. I'm just like, was programmed from my yeah, yeah. childhood experiences and you. young no, experiences. No, I think you're, you're pulling it off okay. <laughs> well, I'd love to ask you just a little bit uh, to wrap up here. Yeah. If you could talk to the younger Tony Hansen just getting started trading or you know, put another way, someone just getting started, trying to get their head around the markets, charts, trading, what would you, any, any you know, one piece of advice or any suggestion you would give them to, to help get in a position to be making good decisions down the road? Find yourself a time machine and go find the older version of you. There you go, right? Have a deep conversation. Okay, that's good. Time machines aside, anything else you might, you might throw it? No, I think, um, let's, Stay away from all the complicated systems. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Focus on support and resistance. Okay. Don't get too complex. Yeah. Try to keep things simple. Yep. Start slowly. Start like you're learning how to read. And like yeah, yeah. you're just first, first you're learning the alphabet. Mm -hmm. Then you're learning, you know, sight words. Mm -hmm. And then you're learning sentence structure. Right. Think of it like that. I mean, like the League of Traders, like the, the mentoring that I do. Yep. I, we're at kind of like intermediate to advanced, you right. know, but I still teach that beginner stuff. Okay. But it, it works everything together. I mean, trading yeah. is like, a, it's, it's a language, That's you know, right. it's yep. not yep. just, Hey, I learned this pattern. I'm going to go be awesome. Yeah, right. no. Although that's how some people want right. to approach this No, So you this learn thing, the so. pattern yes. and then you learn the nuances of the pattern. That's right. You yeah, learn yeah, all yeah. the building blocks that make the pattern a pro in one situation and a con in another. Yeah, yeah. It might be the exact same looking pattern on a five minute time frame, but totally different on the 240 minute. Yeah. So even though one of them works perfectly, the other one fails right. because of the, tra the placement that's right. of the that's trade. Right. So it's good. It, yeah, it, it takes time. It's not yeah. something you can go in and just jump and you have to think of it like you're earning your degree, you know? I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good guidance for everyone, I would say. Yeah. This I has been so. such a pleasure, Tony. Thank oh, yeah. you so much. And I, you've done so much to educate people through the money show and in other places for so long. So thanks so much for, for everything you've done. Oh, thank you Appreciate for having it. me. Good to meet you, Tony. You too. This is Tony Hansen uh, here at the Las Vegas Traders Expo. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.